Hi, my name is Madeline and welcome to my soft sunset glow tutorial. The reference photo that we're going to be painting from today is from last week's paint your style challenge photo. When I saw this photo, I just fell in love with that really bright glow that we get from the sun at the focal point of the photo and I wanted to use purples and dark blues to sort of build that forest kind of in front of it. And I apologize in advance that my voice is not 100%. I'm like getting over cold, but, but I think my voice for the most part has gone back to normal. So while I'm taping off my watercolor paper down with my masking tape, let's quickly go over the supplies. Please feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at the list. I'm using Arches 100% cotton paper. I do use handmade watercolors for this piece and as always you don't need to use the same um, exact supplies that I do. I will try to share what types of colors that I'm using so that you can paint along and I will include the exact name of colors um, because I've had a few people request um, to know. The brand of handmade paints that I'm using today is Addison and Segwick's. She is off of Etsy. But I'll be using some warm yellows, pinks, purples, and then a dark blue. Um, I will be using metallic paint. You just need the color gold. Um, I'm going to be primarily painting with my Polina Bright Round Zero, Round Two, my makeshift tree brush, which I'll talk a little bit about later, my Princeton Mottler brush that I'm using to wet the paper and a few of my liner brushes. So I've completely wet my paper and I like starting off wet on wet for this initial background wash because we want to start creating that glow. So when I'm talking about um, light when we are painting with watercolor, we are trying to preserve white space because white space um, to our eye looks like brightness and so i'm gonna leave that sort of bright spot open i'm coming in um sorry i used a little bit of a warm yellow for the top of the sky and then now i'm grabbing a color that's very similar to opera rose and i'm just creating some pink color um, to the sides of that center um, soft bright spot we need this layer to be wet on wet because it allows all these colors to sort of flow together and not create too many hard lines. And so I like that and I'm going to dry this layer. And then now I'm going to switch over to my smaller round brush. I was previously using the two and now I'm going to grab my zero and we're going to paint that land right underneath the sun. It's pretty far off in the background as we are painting it. Keep in mind that it is going to be covered by, you know, trees and foliage later on. So I will admit I had trouble sort of painting this part. I'm not sure why. I think because I wanted to like create a really circular glow and I just think I put a little bit too much pressure on myself. But anyways, I'm grabbing the same yellow that I used previously for the sky. Um, a darker value of it and then I am grabbing that opera like color that I had mixed a little bit earlier into the yellow and then as we kind of fan out the edges of this kind of mountain background mountain is going to be purely opera so we have opera on the outside and then as we move towards the center it's opera mixed with that warm yellow and then in the very center it's just a very light wash of the warm yellow. I think what I did wrong was I didn't use enough water this first time so then it dried and then I just had a really hard time lifting the paint afterwards. So instead of you know this piece of land sort of seamlessly blending into each other like it would wet on wet I sort of have you know some parts that are drying faster than others and so I'm getting a lot of unwanted hard lines. So actually what I've decided to do is I'm actually just going to paint this middle part again um, because it's actually starting to dry. And now that I've painted it with color with the same yellow, a darker value, I'm going to use a clean brush 
and I'm going to try to start to lift um, some of the paint to kind of get that spot. So the trouble that I'm running into right now is that the first brush stroke that I did to draw this part of the further mountain, it dried and so I'm having trouble lifting that line and so you kind of see that line still. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit more color. So I'm going to add more of the yellow and I'm going to add more of the pink and I'm going to sort of just sort of re-wet this whole area with paint again and then I'm going to come back at the very end and sort of use a paper towel to lift that center bright spot. And I'm not going to lie, this part of my painting stressed me out a lot. So my advice to you is, as we move along in the tutorial, this part actually is like mostly covered. So don't stress out about it. If, you ha are you, if you're having weird lines, like I'm having weird lines, you're most likely going to cover it. So embrace the weird lines. And when we start painting the foliage in the front, we can cover whatever wonky lines that um, kind of got left from this phase. So now that I've essentially repainted that area of land, I'm grabbing a little paper towel again and I'm going to just blot out where we want the brightest part of our painting. All I can think as I'm rewatching this, doing the voiceover, is that I'm like crazy overworking <laughs> this far off distant mountain. So if it's any consolation to you, I overwork my stuff. So if you overwork your stuff, it's okay. We all overwork our stuff. And that doesn't mean it's not going to turn out well. It just means we get fixated on, you know, wanting it to look a certain way and we drive ourselves crazy. So I'm going to just leave it at that. I'm going to dry that layer and now I'm going to come show you my tree brush. So if you've watched the tutorial from me before, you most likely have seen it. This is like one of my oldest brushes. It's a Princeton Heritage Round 2. I smash it to, onto my palette like I did right there and it bends the brush hairs and makes it... Um, well, obviously not straight and then I get like really amazing like tree textures so now I'm grabbing a darker purple and I'm mixing it along with the opera like color onto my palette and I do have some leftover paint on my palette so it might be a little bit darker but we're gonna start painting the grassy foliage that we see in the foreground so I want to pull up our reference photo again and you can see that there's, you know, that far off kind of flat mountain that we painted. And then there's in the foreground kind of like a wide like pathway of foliage coming towards us. And so that's a lot of depth. There's like width and then there's like distance. So I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to simplify it by just creating a few layers instead of painting that like trail that we see. Um, so here's how I'm gonna do it color wise. At the center where the glow is, that's where everything value wise is gonna be the lightest. And then as we move out, it's going to get darker. And as we move closer to us, it's gonna get even darker. So right now the foliage in the middle is going to be painted with that opera color. The foliage to the left and the right is painted with that darker purple. And then as I even move upwards towards that glow, I'm going to actually use the same yellow that I did to paint the sky. So what I'm doing right now is I'm covering all the wonky hard lines that I overworked on the layer beneath this. And so I'm just taking my tree brush 
and I'm alternating between the light opera color and the darker purple and I'm gonna just try to fill up this space so they could be like bushes they could be trees I'm gonna paint some little wheat wispies in a little bit um, but like I said earlier we cover like a good amount of the layer beneath and on this bottom right corner I'm gonna get like a really concentrated dark purple and I'm gonna make it a lot darker and that contrast the dark colors and the medium tone colors and the light valued colors that's that's what's creating the depth in our eyes Now I'm going to switch over to my brand new favorite brush. It's this Cheapy Princeton Select Liner 10-0. Um, it's like been my go-to for fine lines. And so what I'm going to do is paint some wheat stalks. And you can paint these however you want. There's like so many different ways to paint them. What I do is I paint a um, long a thin line and then I just sort of like feather it out at the very end and I'm gonna just paint a few and because these are painted in yellow and not the pink that we've been using this makes it feel like illuminated by the sun shining really brightly behind it I'm also trying to like vary the angle that I paint them at so that they're not just all like, you know, sticking straight up. I think there's like a tendency to just paint straight up. Um, so I'm having some pointing upwards, some pointing to the left, some pointing to the right. This one I'm going to make a little bit higher or taller, I should say. That's actually, that's actually the... Um, the opera color and then the very tip right here I'm gonna use the yellow Now I'm going to grab my dark blue and I'm going to darken this bottom right corner a little bit more to create more depth now that the paints have dried a little bit and they've lightened up um, a little bit. Now I want to paint a tree on the right side. This is my Da Vinci Colonio size 4 liner. I like using this brush for trees. There isn't a tree in our reference photo, but remember reference photos are just starting points for you and you can sort of go wherever you feel led um, when you are painting from a reference photo so I'm using the same purple the dark purple that I used earlier um, and I'm gonna paint the top of this tree with that darker purple and then after I get down maybe like a third of the way I'm gonna switch to the opera color and then that change in color is going to make the middle part of the tree feel illuminated by that same bright sunspot that's illuminating um, those wispy um, wheat stalks. So this is that lighter opera color. And then I'm even going to, I think closer towards the end, color the edges of that opera part of the tree with some yellow. And that change in color is going to look really, really pretty. And then for the bottom of the tree, I'm going to grab that dark purple again. So 
Now I'm going to use the same liner brush and I'm going to just use the dark blue and I'm going to paint some sort of like grass blades just to give the foliage some variation. Sometimes if you use just the tree brush, it doesn't have like that really full effect. Um, so I like to add grass blades to it. And then now I'm grabbing the tree brush and I'm grabbing the dark blue and I'm mixing it a little bit with the dark purple. And I'm going to paint this, these grasses kind of like right in front of us a darker color um, to add to the depth. And if you accidentally pick up too much color, you can do what I just did. Just kind of like dab it on a paper towel or cloth close by. That's an easy way to sort of lighten the value of your brush stroke without having to like rinse your brush and like grab, you know, some more color and kind of match it perfectly. I like that. I'm going to dry this layer. And then now I'm going to grab the same Da Vinci liner and I'm just going to add some yellow to the very left bits of the tree right here. And as I'm winding down this piece, I'm going to grab my Princeton select liner and I'm going to start painting a flock of birds. So I'm, I want to do something really fun with this flock. I'm going to paint them normally, which is I use like a really light value of indigo or sorry, I use a really light wash of indigo. And then at the center where the light is, I'm actually going to switch it up and I'm going to use some gold metallic paint and I'm going to make those birds look like they're being kind of like illuminated by the light behind it. I always am like looking for like a chance to paint metallic birds. So this is like the perfect opportunity. And actually, instead of having it become just like indigo, metallic birds, indigo, I'm going to actually add some birds with the opera color. So we kind of have like an ombre dark to light back to dark. I really like how this turned out. I'm going to grab my tree brush and that dark blue again and just add a little bit more dark blue right beneath um, the sunspot just to really lock in that contrast. And I'm going to try this layer and then we are good to rip our masking tape off once everything has dried. Actually, as I was looking at it just now, I had another idea. I'm going to get my metallic paint again, and I'm just going to highlight the tips of those wispy wheat stalks just to give even more of that sense of glowing light behind this center, center focal point. And I'm so in love with this. This is one of my favorite pieces that I've painted so far. So if you painted along with me, definitely tag me on social media so I can see. If you liked this tutorial, please hit the like button. It's a really small way to help my channel grow.
And if you enjoy my content, use the following QR codes to either find me on Patreon or Instagram.